Hello everyone, Celtic Fairy Tarot back with another pick a card reading and today we are going to be getting into your dream life. What are your dreams trying to tell you? What is the message there? What is going on? We have pile one. We have pile two. And we have pile three. Take your time, vibe out which pile is calling to you and the timestamps are down below. Can't wait to get into it. Hello, pile one. You have chosen photo number one. And the first thing that I'm feeling in the energy of your dream life is that you are reliving old situations. It could be in a very different, unique way every time. Um, and it's not going to feel like the exact situation, but it's almost like your sacral chakra is taking its power back. Um, you're reliving these old timelines or this old energy. Um, that's kind of seated itself within your subconscious in order to make a different choice than you made previously. So you could be someone who's suffering from romantic trauma and in your dream life, your partner continues to abandon you. And for dream after dream after dream, you continue to chase them. And then, you know, you have that one dream where you decide to walk away and you decide to focus on yourself and the dreams stop happening. It, it's kind of that vibe. You are taking your power back. Um, you are realigning with your sacral chakra. It kind of feels also like some of you are cord cutting in these dreams. I'm seeing someone like... And this is a little bit strange, but I'm seeing someone like push someone away and they they float away like out of your energy, out of your dream. Um, so there could be some cord cutting present here in your dream life as well. Let's get more information. Okay. Spirit team of pile one. What does pile one need to know about their dream life, please? What does pile one need to know about their dream life, please? We have the Knight of Wands. Yeah, a lot of taking action and a lot of taking different action is what I'm hearing. Like you, you aren't in these dreams. Um, I don't know how to explain this. You're not making the same choices. And I think sometimes you can get stuck in a cycle of dreams. Like if you have been abandoning yourself for the sake of others, you could be continuing to, um, chase these other people in dreams. I also feel like animals are very present. Um, the panther, uh, cats, um, things like that. But I feel like animals are very present in this um, dream life that you're having right now. And so you could get stuck in these cycles and continue to chase. But there is going to be a moment where you choose yourself. And that is when these dreams are going to shift, right? Mm. I feel like deities could be present in your dreams as well. For some of you, these deities are not making themselves known. So you may be like, what the heck? <laughs> um, or seeing like strange creatures or um, strange people that you're unfamiliar with in your dreams. Uh, I feel like your spirit team is working with you here in these dreams. Spirit team of pile one. What does pile one need to know about their dream life, please? Yeah, these dreams are very shamanic by nature. They're very shamanic by nature. So you have to have been doing some kind of sacral chakra energy work or energy work to take your power back from somebody or energy work to cord cut or remove attachments from your life. Uh, but they're very shamanic by nature. 
Pile 1, Spirit Team of Pile 1. What does Pile 1 need to know about their dream life, please? We have the Eight of Wands. Yeah. <laughs> I, I feel like in these dreams, your heart is racing. Your heart is racing. Um, but it's not necessarily emotional. I don't really know how to explain this energy. But it's like you want to... You're... you're you're looking for something. You want to accomplish something. There's a lot of motivation, especially with the Knight of Wands. It's not that your heart is racing out of fear. Um, it's it's almost like you feel triggered. You feel very triggered in these dreams, but it's not necessarily fear. Um, it's almost like restlessness. Yeah, a restless feeling. Spirit team of Pile 1. What does Pile 1 need to know about their dream life, please? Some of you, some of you could be having dreams where you're stuck somewhere and you're trying to find someone. Um, some of you could be having dreams where you're trying to escape from being trapped somewhere. Let's see. Thank you. We have the hanged man and we have the ten of cups. Yeah, it's a restless energy. I feel like a lot of you know what these dreams mean i feel like you understand the symbolism you understand what these dreams are trying to tell you um even if you're cycling in these dreams i feel like you understand you wake up and you're like oh i should have chose myself or i should have walked away um but yet have you ever been in a really toxic relationship and you kind of go back to that toxic relationship several times before you realize that this isn't what you want it's kind of like withdrawal symptoms is what i'm hearing like you are eventually going to get through this this too shall pass you are eventually going to choose yourself pay attention to the symbolism pay attention to the animals that show up in your dreams this is leading you to like a clearing of your sacral chakra it's leading you to taking your power back in one way or another i feel like with the ten of cups here there's a lot of dreams yeah a lot of dreams some of you could be suffering from insomnia right now you're like i'm just i'm just exhausted <laughs> and i need a break and it's perfectly valid tell your spirit team that you need a break in between these dreams because if you're not getting a good night's sleep if you're not getting rest um that's going to affect your day to day so make sure that you are also prioritizing your daytime physical needs as well as this shamanic dream healing okay all right, can we please clarify the Knight of Wands? Thank you. We have a King of Wands, oof. <laughs> yeah, you're taking your power back. You're becoming your own leader again. You're, you're making choices um, or you're leading yourself to making choices that are more beneficial to you um, than the, the people around you now. There's like a freeing of your soul. Like I'm taking my soul back is what I'm hearing. Can we clarify the Eight of Wands? Can we clarify the Eight of Wands, please? Can we have it fly out, please? Lift. The Nine of Cups under the Eight of Wands. Yeah, you're, some of you are like, I just want this to be done. I understand why this is happening. <laughs> and I just want it to be done. Yeah. Fair enough, Pile One. Completely fair enough. I think this is a process that is necessary um, to get you to the other side. Like, like again, I'm hearing withdrawals. Withdrawals. Like, you have to, you have to kind of bunker down and move through this in the way that you need to move through this making sure that you're not rushing uh the hanged man please the hanged man please we have the eight of swords yeah you're freeing yourself you're freeing yourself and it's heavy it's difficult it's rather confusing sometimes. Like again, you're having dreams uh, that might not necessarily make sense. Some of them make sense, um, but in each and every one, you're trapped and you're trying to find a way out. That's what I'm getting. You're trapped and you're trying to find a way out. 
The way out, pile one, is to stop searching for whatever or whoever this is. The way out is to stop searching for whatever or whoever this is and start searching for your exit, your personal exit. Ten of cups, please. Oh, thank you. Wow, we have the four of pentacles, the nine of wands, and the five of swords. Yeah, you've been through a lot in life. You've been through a lot in life, pile one. There's a lot of PTSD that I'm picking up on here. There's a lot of trauma. There's a lot of hurt and pain and not necessarily, again, not necessarily fear, but like being ready for something to happen, being ready for the rug to be pulled out from under you. That's what's healing here. I'm hearing like, it doesn't matter if the rug is ripped out from under us. We're going to continue to stand anyway. We're going to continue to be in our power anyway, regardless of what happens, regardless of whether or not this person abandons us or this thing is removed from our life, um, regardless of what is going on within the dream. We're going to stand steady and we're going to choose ourselves. That's what I'm hearing here. Your sacral chakra is looking for peace. Yeah. Not strategy, not pushing forward, searching for something or someone else, um, searching for that peace within something or someone else, uh, searching for that peace within you. Okay. All right. We're going to pull some oracle cards now. And we're going to get to a little bit more of the core energies here and some advice from your spirit team moving forward. We're gonna pull two cards. <laughs> Maybe three. <laughs> All right. Spirit team of Pile One, what is some advice moving forward for Pile One, please? Thank you. What is some advice moving forward for Pile One, please? Thank you. Yeah, three. <laughs> All right. We have Groove. We have Past. And we have Harbinger. All right, we are going to read these directly out of the book for you. We're going to start with Groove. Find your groove. Shake your tushy. Grab some crazy friends who will dance with you even if there is no music. Here, our gentle creature puts the needle to the vinyl. Ants wave four limbs in anticipation of the song to come. Whatever your song is, move to it. Car dance, chair dance, whatever movement you can manage is called for here. You are being asked to break out of your routine to take a moment to wiggle wildly. <laughs> when we let go with abandon, our hearts are free to sing as loud as they'd like. So turn it up. Now is the moment you've been waiting for. Let the whole world see how you can bust a move as you choreograph a whole set of steps for your brilliant life. Dance to the music. It's time to get down and groovy. And so dancing and moving your body really also helps release stored up energy. Um, so if you are someone who is c consistently reliving these dreams and you're not making that different choice, move your body more throughout the day, whether it's dancing, whether it's exercise. I really encourage dancing um, because it's a lot more free spirited and fun <laughs> than exercise, uh, depending on who you are. But this is going to help shake some of that energy up out of the sacral chakra as well. Um, so definitely be moving the hips, I'm hearing. Moving the hips um, and the lower body as much as you can throughout the day. Okay. We now have past. Along the way in life, we are gifted so many things. Here on a tandem bike ride, one friend looks ahead to keep both riders on track. The other looks behind to see what's behind them. He is greeted by the sight of a friendly bird hurrying to catch up with them. Ooh, I also heard your higher self say, call me in, in the dream. If your dream is lucid, 
Call in your higher self in that moment and ask your higher self if they can help you make this different choice. Where is the exit plan, right? When we remember to examine our surroundings, what amazing things we find. It is all well and good to focus on the future, but we should never forget friends and experiences from the past. The questions you might want to ask yourself with this card are, what lessons from my past can help me right now? And or who am I forgetting from my past that could possibly help me in this current situation? So pedal toward the future, but always consider what is behind you. Buried in the past are small treasures of memories and people who will still be there for you. I feel like, yeah, you're taking your power back from the past and also putting pieces of old versions of you back together, right? So maybe even calling in these old versions of you um, that could could navigate this situation with you is a good idea. So calling in your higher self, but also calling in these past versions of yourself, right? Buried in the past are small treasures of memories and people who will still be there for you. Yeah, there's a lot of focus on chasing whoever and whatever this is. And I think that once that focus can be shifted, these dreams are going to start to change. Um, you're going to see difference in your dream life rather than just feeling restless, um, feeling the need to chase, right? All right, we have Harbinger now. A light beckons us forward. Bats swirl around this Harbinger. But what news do they bring? Numbers tumble down. Seven is the number of seeking, of thinking, of moving forward on a quest. Nine marks its territory as selfless and compassion. Our creature then is showing us that a new journey awaits. The bats may come from our own internal dark place. Rather than scary, they are simply helpers. The helpers are also gifts to you. Study them. Learn about them. Be compassionate with yourself as we are all beginners at some point, and we will all be beginners again. Follow the path of inquiry currently calling you. Open your eyes to see what lights in front of you. This isn't a time for delay as the call to the journey is now. While you may want to plan more or think things through, you need to do that in route, like do it as you are moving. Ask yourself what you actually need in this moment. Perhaps you can grab a pen, a snack, and a journal. All else that you require will be found. Okay, so what I'm hearing too is before you fall asleep, try to write in a journal. Try to write a journal entry about what you want to accomplish in your dream. This will really help your subconscious mind and it will really help you in root in this dream. <laughs> Some journeys are long while others are short, but when you receive this signal, follow the signs. You will be rewarded for your trust. Beautiful, beautiful energy. Yeah, again, I think the solid core of energy here is taking your power back and I think you're going to do it pile one. You're definitely going to accomplish this. There needs to be trust within yourself and there needs to be um, different decisions made in order to break this cycle. Okay. All right. I'm going to leave that here, pile one. I wish you the best of luck on your journey and until next time. Bye. Hello, pile two. You have chosen photo number two and you are definitely astral traveling. <laughs> that is what I'm feeling here. Some of you could even be dream walking. Yeah, it feels like like your sacral chakra is ascending. It feels like your energy is growing stronger. Your presence in the spiritual community is growing stronger. So you could be practicing astral travel. You could be practicing lucid dreams, but it feels like, um, what is that movie? It feels like Slumberland, right? Um, when she has the ball of yarn. So I feel like there's definitely an intention set um, to be lucid dreaming. And if there's not, there is somewhere within your energy. I feel like it could be your sacral chakra or your heart chakra. Um, but in terms of dream walking, you could be having dreams where you have no idea where you are. You have no idea who the people around you are. Um, but you feel in your heart 
that you're supposed to be there, whatever that means to you. Um, some of you could be looking through the eyes of others as well in dream life. So um, what I mean by that is you could be in a situation where you look down at your body, you look down at your hands and you're not you right? Because you are looking through the eyes of another being, another soul. Some of you could be dream walking and you are yourself, but you are surrounded by people that you don't know and, and an environment that you don't know. Yeah, that's the vibe I'm getting here. Let's get more information. I feel like for a lot of you in your dreams, you're helping people. Like, I'll give you an example. In one dream that I had, I was in a store. Um, I don't even know what kind of store it was. The woman that I spoke to when I walked into the store looked like some kind of technician, like a nail technician or something like that. And when I walked into the store, she said, I'm really sorry, we're closed right now. And so I said, oh, okay, thank you. And I turned around and I went to walk out the door and there were two cats fighting off a raccoon. And in folklore, a raccoon can be considered a trickster. Um, and the cats were trying to fight this raccoon, but they were losing this battle. So I, tr I helped the cats. <laughs> And I tried to get this raccoon, right? I had a bag in my hand that just kind of appeared out of nowhere. And I started trying to whack the raccoon. <laughs> and I woke up before I knew whether or not I got the raccoon. But I had gotten the cats inside and the door closed and locked safely before I did wake up. So a lot of you that are dream walking are helping people in some way or are trying to make people aware of something in some way like dream messengers is what i'm hearing um dream protectors let's see if i can get more information here yeah so a lot of you are like waking up and you're like what the hell was that <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. And as far as looking through the eyes of other people, I'm hearing your spirit team say you are mediums. You are mediums. And what you are doing is you are um, supposed to follow the breadcrumbs is what I'm hearing. You're supposed to follow the breadcrumbs. What did you see in this dream? Can you match it up to something happening in the news, happening on social media? Whatever it is, you're supposed to follow the breadcrumbs of these dreams I'm hearing. All right, spirit team of pile two. What does pile two need to know about their dream life, please? Ooh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, write it down. Write down your dreams. When you wake up, if you can remember them, um, keep a dream journal and write down what you saw um, and what you experienced. If you're having a difficult time remembering all the bits and pieces, I like to use mugwort salve. Um, mugwort is incredible. You can drink it in a tea. I don't recommend. It tastes horrible. <laughs> um, you can also use it in a salve. You can get lots of them on Etsy or you can make your own. If you want to know how to make your own, um, email me at celticfairytarot90 at gmail.com and I will give you the complete recipe, okay? It's not hard to make, it just takes a little while to make. <laughs> All right. We have the three of wands. Yes, look, you're branching out. You're branching out. We have the eight of pentacles, mastery. Wow, yeah, you've been learning and incorporating that learning. You, you, what is the word? What is the word? Oh, it's right on the tip of my tongue. You know when you're working with someone else and you're you're gaining wisdom by working with someone else? I don't know why the word's not coming to me. I feel like the word's not coming to me because you've already surpassed it, right? You have, the, t the student has become the teacher. <laughs> we have the two of wands, beautiful. We have the 10 of cups. We have the Knight of Cups under the Three of Wands. Yeah, you're helping. I feel like you're branching out to do some kind of energy work for people while you are sleeping. Um, yeah. We have the Six of Cups. We have Temperance under the Two of Wands. And we have the Hermit under the Ten of Cups. 
I'm going to tell you another story because I feel like a lot of you are having imposter syndrome right now. I actually went on a vacation about five years ago to Florida, Orlando, Florida <laughs> with the kids. And um, I had a, a very strange dream and it was rather chaotic and I didn't understand. I was kind of fearful when I woke up. I wasn't myself in the dream. I was somebody else. I was looking through the eyes of somebody else. And what I had witnessed and what I had experienced was horrific and I didn't understand it. So my immediate reaction was trust my gut, trust my instincts. And I went on the internet and I started to Google crimes that had taken place in the area and about two houses down from the rental house that we had, there was a crime committed that was exactly what I saw in my dream. And there was a spirit reaching out to me. So I feel like a lot of you could have spirits reaching out to you if you are having dreams like this. Um, and a lot of you are feeling the imprint of that wherever you are. So it might not necessarily be a spirit that is reaching out to you, but it could be some imprint, an energetic imprint on the land wherever you are that is looking for healing. And just your presence, just your astral presence in that area is healing, okay? With the Six of Cups under the Eight of Pentacles, again, this is something you've been practicing. And I feel like this is something you used to do in a past life. Yeah, this is something you used to do in a past life, like Ghost Whisperer is what I'm feeling. Mm. It's like you spent a lot of time in your past lives, astral traveling, dream walking, um, using your mediumship abilities. And... The beginning half of this lifetime was kind of re a refresher, right? It was a refresher. I'm still trying to get that word. What is the word? <laughs> what is the word? Apprentice. There it is. Thank you. <laughs> apprentice. It's like in a past life, you were an apprentice. You worked with a shaman or you worked with a healer or you worked with a medium and you learned. And in the beginning half of your life, it was like spirit was trying to remind you of your ability. Spirit was trying to re remind you. So you could have watched a lot of ghost adventures, a lot of haunting things, a lot of paranormal things. You were likely very drawn to it. Yeah. And you're like, but I have no practice. So how did this happen? Well, it happened in a past life. <laughs> we have temperance also under the two of wands. You're meant to be patient with yourself here when it comes to understanding these dreams. And that's why it's important to write them down. Okay. Yeah. Write them down. Your human mind couldn't even begin to process um, the work that you are doing in the astral realm. So not remembering all of your dreams, not remembering certain bits and pieces. This is very normal. Okay. And it's very healthy for your brain because if you were to remember everything, you might have a mental breakdown when you wake up. <laughs> so be patient with yourself. Pile two. We also have the hermit under the 10 of cups here. And the hermit is all about going within. Um, so I feel like these experiences are also very personal to you. And if you're sharing them with other people and you're getting a reaction like, oh, you're crazy or, oh, you must have, you know, had spicy food before bed or that dream doesn't make sense. It was probably just, you know, a coincidence, whatever. You're meant to not internalize that. I feel like that is adding to your imposter syndrome. Trust yourself. The more that you trust yourself, the more that these dreams are going to come through clearer and clearer. Okay. The more that you go at this from a perspective where you understand that there are meanings to these dreams, the, the clearer these visuals are going to come in, the more these stories are going to make sense. Like I'm seeing, you know how you watch a TV show and you have to wait a week to get the next chapter? That's kind of what this is. You're not going to be getting all of the information at once. Yeah. And I know in the movie Slumberland, right? In the movie Slumberland, they tell you that if you are dreamwalking in someone else's dream and you die, you die in real life and you don't wake up. Do not be afraid of that pile too. Um, if you die in another person's dream, you will still wake up in the morning. <laughs> um, that has no impact on your soul. That has no impact on your physical being, okay? I've done it about a million times. <laughs> Some of the, the sleepwalking dreams I have are intense and I have lost my life in several of them and i'm still here and still kicking so please do not be afraid to venture please do not be afraid to roam you with your life force are more powerful than anything in the dream world in the astral okay 
All right, we are gonna pull these out of the way and we're gonna get some advice moving forward from your spirit team. Okay, Spirit Team of Pile 2. What is, what is some advice for Pile 2 moving forward in their dream life, please? We have Pause. Yeah, I feel like with the Pause card as well, like, pause in the morning. Don't get directly out of bed. Grab your dream journal from right next to you. Make sure you place it there. So in the morning, you can get up and write down what has happened and what you've experienced. We have teacher. Beautiful. You could be teaching people in your dreams as well. I feel like you are you are dream walking for a very specific reason. It's not to be nosy. It's not anything like that. I feel like you are called to each specific dream or each specific environment for a reason. Can we have one more, please? Thank you. Wander. <laughs> Oh, that just made me so excited. <laughs> I just feel like you need some validation in your life, Pile 2. You need some validation, and I hope that was it. <laughs> All right, we have pause. We're going to start with that one here. As soon as I can find it in the book. All right. All right, a C. Sarah is a break in the... Oh wait, I'm sorry. A Cicera is a break in a verse where one phrase ends and the following phrase begins. In music, this break may vary between the slightest perception of silence all the way up to a full pause. In life, this is the moment you are given to assimilate what has just happened before taking, before being taken into the next experience. Yeah, make sure in the morning time you're really analyzing and trying to remember what your experience was. I feel like that's important. Our magical creature has set his instrument aside to enjoy the beautiful flower his music has conjured up. Rather than just look at it, he immerses himself in the experience by smelling it, holding it, and gazing into the very center of this bloom. Consider how you approach the pauses you are given in life. Do you pace restlessly, waiting for the next action? This card is showing you that perhaps it is time to sink into the quiet of right now. Allow yourself to be present by engaging all of your senses. How does this moment feel to you on all levels? Yeah, really be, really try to be processing these dreams, Pile 2. You're having them for a reason, okay? All right, now we have a teacher. Come sit with the teacher, the ancient forest dweller. So much has passed before their watchful gaze. They've seen birth, growth, death so many times. You're an old soul pile too. Understanding passages of time is their gift to us. When it feels as if something is taking too long, gaze into their eyes. Let their herbal smoke waft around you to remind you that time, like smoke, dissipates easily. The message they bring us today is one of dichotomy. Sometimes the act of waiting feels like dragging yourself through the thickest mud. Other times you feel as if you are being propelled by hurricane force winds. But time is a funny thing. When we dread something, when we do our best to ignore the coming event, that's when the hurricane blows. When we want something so badly, when we feel a desperate need to arrive at the next point, Mud, mud, mud awaits us. Yeah, be patient, pile two. I feel like, again, this is a story that is playing out. It's not a story that is meant to be read in one day. Will we be sucked down? Will we be blown away? Our teacher creature offers this thought. I also feel like some of you could be having dreams of your past lives as well. What if we simply continued to move forward as we always have? Perhaps the lesson we need to contemplate today is that is that of living in the moment. If we focus on what is right in front of us, all things will happen as they are meant to happen. When we learn not to push the river or try to stop the wind, we can relieve ourselves of so much. Sit here with the teacher a bit, let yourself breathe and just learn. Beautiful. We now have wander. 
Our gentle astronomer gazes through a telescope to see into the field of silvery wonders above. A bird keeps company, listening to the words of awe and wondering what wondering that come forth. Ooh, I read that wrong. I was actually seeing um, spirits with you on this walk. So you are incredibly divinely protected through this process when you are wandering, when you are venturing out. And I feel like one particular spirit that is with you is the spirit in your past life who taught you. I feel like your past life teacher walks with you in your dream life this lifetime. All right, let me try this again. <laughs> a bird keeps company, listening to the words of awe and wonder that come forth. Deep into the night, they watch the cosmic lanterns dance across the black velvet of the sky. They are amazed every time they see a new star. The ones they see every time inspire them to continually seek into the inky depths of space to see what new friends they might find. When is the last time you approached your life with wonder? Let the beauty of the wildflower growing unexpectedly awe you. It is time to examine your own soul. Go out to wander this vast land. Let yourself look at life with open, loving bewilderment for a time. Not everything has to make sense. It will all unfold. That's the promise of the cosmic wanderers we call stars. Beautiful. Break out that dream journal pile too. I feel like some of you have been wanting to do it, but you haven't brought around yourself or you haven't brought yourself around to do it do it. <laughs> You'll thank yourself later, okay? All right, pile two. I'm going to leave that here. I wish you the best of luck on your journey, and until next time, bye. Hello, pile three. You have chosen photo number three, and I feel the first um, energy in your dream life that I'm picking up on is definitely one of releasing abandonment and fear from your sacral chakra. You are healing and purging your sacral chakra. A lot of you have felt small in this lifetime, have felt afraid of how small you are in this vast world, in this vast physical world, and in this vast spiritual world. A lot of you could have had parents that you feel as though didn't protect you in childhood because again i'm feeling a lot of fear like the shadow man around the corner and i want to reassure you pile three that there is no shadow man in your room there is no demon following you and hunting you in your sleep there is no negative energy coming for you this is absolutely the subconscious mind it's at very surface level and if there were a spirit chasing you it would be very dense and the vibration would be very familiar okay i would understand i would see it and what i'm feeling instead is again you really taking your power back when it comes to your place in this world your sacral chakra i feel like your spirit team is also helping you yeah i feel like you're very used to feeling vulnerable you're very used to feeling small and the reason that these dreams are occurring is to give you an opportunity to fight that fear um so the the boogeyman quote unquote or the entity that seems to be stalking you in your dreams is nothing more than a representation of this fear of being vulnerable this fear of being abandoned this fear of being um on your own in one way or another you could be you know having dreams where you're in a forest and you're all alone and you have to go find something or you're trying to find your safe person you're trying to find your safe place but you can't um there is a need to fight in these dreams. A lot of you could be waking up, you know, in the middle of a fight or in the middle of, um, you know, feeling lost and feeling afraid. Um, try your best to fall back asleep and put yourself back into that dream. Try your best not to wake yourself up in the middle of that process. It kind of feels like, have you ever seen the episode of Boy Meets World where they're in the school and there's like this killer on the loose and the killer turns out to be Sean in Sean's dream? Um, yeah, you're battling parts of yourself um, in order to take your power back. You're battling heavy emotions. So like these entities, that you see in your dreams or feel i feel like some of you might not even see them you just feel them stalking you or feel them coming they're not entities um they are either versions of yourself from the past or they are heavy emotions that dwell within your sacral chakra that are trying to release okay let's get more information here
Okay. Spirit team of pile three. What does pile three need to know about their dream life, please? Wow, we have the lovers and we have the four of pentacles. Yeah, a lot of you could be having dreams again where you're trying to find your safe person. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's a lover you're trying to find. For some of you, it could be um, a lover that you view as your safe person. Um, let's see. But it's like in the dream, you're alone. You're fearful. There's something chasing you and or you're about to walk into a dark place or a dark forest and there's fear and you just want to feel safe. That is the vibe here. That is the vibe here. Can we have more information, please? Five of Cups. Yeah, it's like in every dream that is occurring. And I feel like a lot of you, they're nightmares. They're not dreams simply put they are nightmares they are scary and i feel like a lot of the nightmares that you're having leave you feeling helpless and hopeless and vulnerable and weak that is the energy with the four of pentacles here it's like there's a need to self-preserve in these dreams that you're feeling a need to run to something or someone that makes you feel safe can we clarify the lovers please I feel like the objective of this, this taking your power back, this purging the sacral chakra, is to feel safe in your own skin, to battle this on your own, to show yourself just how strong you are, to show yourself just how not meek you are. I feel like you are convinced that you need whatever this is to feel safe. And I think that your spirit team is trying to show you that you don't need whatever this is to feel safe. Mm-hmm. You are a warrior, pile three. You are powerful. Let's see. It's like battling codependency as well. So you could have either just left a very codependent situation or you could have been abandoned. Um, or you could have perceived abandonment in one way or another. Can we clarify the lovers, please? Thank you. Thank you. We have the fool. Yeah, it's a new beginning here. It's a new beginning breaking free from codependency, breaking free from feeling vulnerable, breaking free from the fear that there's always something out to get you. Mm -hmm. That's the energy here. We have the ace of wands under the four of pentacles. And I feel like this fear has kept you from really living your life. I feel like you could be a recluse. You could be someone that tries to stay in and, you know, not communicate with people as much as you don't have to. We have the Page of Cups under the Five of Cups as well. This is, these dreams are trying to bring you back to life. And I know that it doesn't feel that way. I absolutely know that it doesn't feel that way. But they are trying to bring you back to life. They're trying to show you your own power, your own potential. Mm. The back of the deck here is the emperor. Look, <laughs> they're trying to show you just how powerful you are. Yeah, I'm so sorry, pile three, because I can sense that you're waking up afraid, very afraid. You're falling asleep, very afraid. Like there's something on your tail. There's something out to get you. I 10 times over and not feeling a negative energy here. I am not feeling a negative entity. What I am feeling is the fear, the fear powerfully. It's dense. It's like a fog, the fear of vulnerability, the feel of being vulnerable, the fear of being alone. Like the energy is like, imagine you are in a haunted house and all of a sudden you're alone and you're in the dark. Like imagine going down to the basement in the conjuring house. That's the vibe, that fear, that something's watching me, something's out to get me. And I think that you have this fear because you were not protected as a child. This is very much inner child energy. Yeah. And I think that not only, I feel that not only were you not protected, but you were also taught not to protect yourself. You were also taught that being aggressive or being... Um, forceful when it comes to your boundaries is a negativity so it's like not only were you not protected but you were also taught 
not to protect yourself. And so there's this vulnerability within your inner child that's like, well, if I can't do either of those things, I'm just going to stay inside. I'm just going to stay away from people. I'm always going to be prepared. Yeah. And I think that it's almost like a battle of the inner child and your sacral and heart chakras. Yeah. Like your heart chakra wants to open back up. It wants to let people in. It wants to feel motivated again. It's like this is your heart chakra and this is your sacral chakra and they want to open up again. They want to be cleared out. Your body wants to clear it out. It wants to clear the fear out. It wants to be happy to feel the wind on its face again. It wants to be happy to roam again. I feel like you are a, a, a vagabond, pile three, by nature. I feel like you love being part of the collective. You love experiencing new things. When you were a teenager, you probably had this dream that you were going to live out of a backpack and explore the world. But now that you live in kind of this fear-like bubble where you have to keep people at arm's length, you have to stay inside, you have to be away from the collective because there's fear. Your inner child is very afraid. And that is kind of what's being processed in these dreams here. It's not that there's an energy attacking you. It's not that somebody else's energy is attacking you. It's this fear trying to be alchemized. And oftentimes when we have dreams, especially when it comes from the subconscious mind, it's almost like a simulation, right? What would happen if we make a different choice? What would happen if we stood up and fight instead of run? And once we see it play out within our mind, it becomes a lot more effective in our waking life to make that choice, to um, to fight to protect ourselves, to fight for our boundaries, to fight for to advocate for ourselves rather than running, rather than feeling small. This is a very powerful simulation to help you, even though it does not feel that way. And I want to again recognize that it probably does not feel that way. Yeah. All right, let's get these out of the way. And we are going to pull some oracle cards for advice moving forward. I'm going to leave the emperor here. You are the emperor, pile three. Whether you remember it or not, you are powerful. You are a very powerful soul. Trust me, I am no stranger to things that go bump in the night. I grew up in a very um, sick household uh, with a lot of a lot of a lot of inner demons, a lot of external demons, a lot of old, very very old New England energy, and so I am familiar with things that go bump in the night. And if I saw any of that in your energy, I would be the first to tell you. But I'm not. I'm not. I'm seeing fear. A lot of fear. All right. Spirit team of pile three. What is some advice moving forward for pile three, please? It's like... For some of you, I can hear some of you saying, but yeah, I see shadows at night. I see shadows at night. I feel like these are manifestations of what you've been through in the past. Like I said, I feel like you were not protected as a child. And because of that, monsters came into your life. And I feel like these shadows that you might be seeing are manifestations of the fear that your inner child fears. Um, I don't feel like they are actual solid energies. I don't even feel like this is a PK manifestation. I don't even feel like this is a poltergeist pile three. I feel like this is straight and solid fear coming from your inner child. Can we have one, two more, please? Thank you. All right. We have kindred spirits. We have Cosmos, and we have Friendship. Yeah, I feel like this is all about rescuing your inner child. These dreams are all about rescuing your inner child, your present self, making a choice to fight rather than a choice to run. Uh, your present self in these dreams, making the choice to be strong, to stand strong, rather than to run, to show your inner child that you can do this. You can do this. You can walk through life with a sense of security and not need to seek it from someone else. Mm. 
I'm so sorry for what you've been through, Pile 3. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I am sending you so much love. And please know that you are very, very divinely protected. Okay? Especially your higher self. <laughs> your higher self is here. Okay? We are going to begin with kindred spirits. Your higher self also walks through these dreams with you. And I feel like you have souls of past loved ones that walk through these dreams with you. Some of you have seen them. All right, kindred spirits. Like if you had a safe person in childhood, um, like a grandparent or an aunt or a family friend, if you had a safe person and they have passed, they walk these dreams with you, with your inner child. All right, kindred. Where is Kindred Spirit? Sorry, this deck doesn't have <laughs> a table of contents, so I'm just kind of... Moving through it. Okay. When is the last time you had a kappa with a friend? Tea, coffee, water, it doesn't matter what's in the cup. The gift lies in the holder of the handle. This is the true joy of the moment. Whether you gather to remember a friend, a moment, or a plan, or to plan a new adventure, make time to chat. This isn't a deep discussion between our two here. She's stopped by on a whim. They've shared their beverage with her. The spontaneous moment in a field is a gift they share. Rather than check the time, they gaze into each other's eyes. This is intimacy that cannot be forced or manufactured. No one is judging them on how they look or what they choose to talk about. You are being shown how to anchor yourself in this moment. If you don't have a convenient meadow to wander in, reach out to someone. Perhaps call that friend you haven't spoken to in a while. Maybe it will be someone you see every day. Whomever it is, give yourself the present of being present. You might speak to a stranger just to tell them you like their hat, their smile, their shoelaces. Isn't it lovely when we can take a break to have a chat with another person? Do that today. Yeah, you're being called to share your dream experiences with someone that you trust, someone that um, can help you process through this. It doesn't have to be a family member. And if you don't have that person in your life, really try talking to a therapist about the symbolism in these dreams and being a support system for you while you navigate through them. Because again, it is heavy. It is scary. And trying to go through this alone could be really complicated for you, really hard for you. Even if pile three, you leave a comment down below and allow someone, a kind soul who is also going through something similar to comment and be there to support you. Um, your dreams are all about finding that security within, but we still need support, right? We're not going to dive into, you know, whoever answers our comment or our therapist is our safe space, but having somebody to talk this out with could be really beneficial for you. All right, we have Cosmos. Our gentle friend asks a simple question. Where is my place in the cosmos? Who am I? The winged messenger doesn't bring an answer. Instead, it brings a key on a red cord, which represents the circle of life. The key is what will unlock the answer. The key doesn't unlock any specific mechanism of iron or steel. Instead, it, lock it unlocks the mystery of all parts of the cosmos, showing where each of us fit in. Each of the cosmic orbs represent a place of learning that our creature must visit. And again, I feel like this really speaks to your place in the world. You have felt very vulnerable. You have felt very afraid. You have felt very small. Um, like I'm hearing the song, Dust in the Wind. All we are is dust in the wind. There's a lot of chaos in your mind when it comes to um, feeling safe with who you are in this world, feeling safe with taking up space in this world, um, being present in this world, because there's a, a fear of hurt, a fear of pain. Also, I just want to pick these up for a minute and really give your subconscious mind the sound and the visual of these keys so that next time you are in your dream, you can visualize them and you can find 
your strategy plan. You can find your exit plan um, should you need to, okay? So I'm just going to bring these out. These are black iron keys. I want you to use these keys, pile three, as a visual when you don't know what to do, when you can't escape this fear, okay? I want you to use these keys to unlock a chest that can unlock some kind of mechanism um, for you to be able to fight this battle, okay? And I know that that sounds strange, but you'll understand it when you're dreaming <laughs> and it will help, okay? All right. The lesson here is that there is no one place where the creature or any of us belongs. We are all made up of multiple and complex potentials. We are all complicated varieties of a set of skin and bones that can miraculously hold space in more than one realm. The question is not so much where, as it is how many wares. The beginning of the quest of the cosmos is also the end of the quest. It is a circular riddle that continuously answers itself. Yeah, it's almost like, you know, the, the movie Horton Hears a Who could have a message for you. Horton Hears a Who could have a message for you. Um, there is a need to know no matter how small you are, you are powerful. You may be small, but you are mighty. Pile three, okay? All right, we now have Friendship. In troubling times, it's hard to remember that we are not alone. Here, our creature contemplates the moon. They are feeling so lost in thought that they have not heard the soft booted footsteps of the small person beside them. But once that connection is made, that hand-to-hand -hand contact, our creature is gently pulled back to the here and now. They are reminded that they have a friend, and this again is really speaking to your current self and your inner child, okay? It is this commitment of companionship that returns them to a more balanced way of thinking. Now, they have someone to talk with. It is the gift of quiet listening that we all need. For this card, ask yourself, who do I need to talk about this with? Or what point of view am I missing here? Never fear that you are alone in this world. We all have someone who will always be at our side. Cherish them. Let them know how much they mean to you. And again, this is about your inner child, but it's also reminding you that every single person that walks this paradigm has a spirit team. Even if you're unfamiliar with them, even if you don't know who they are, we all have them. And we all have protectors, gatekeepers of our energy. You are divinely protected, even if you don't know who is divinely protecting you. Um, delving into your spiritual life, it's going to be a journey. Okay, and it doesn't have to be a journey that you take right now. I think the most important journey that you are on in this moment is finding peace, finding stability, finding um, your sense of power again, um, your sense of who you are in this world and how you show up, really working on that sacral chakra. Okay, all right, pile three. I'm going to leave that here. I wish you the best of luck on your journey, and until next time, bye.